So this question might look a little bit ridiculous at this point in the game. Uh, we've, been, uh, we've done a lot of derivatives, but I think it's going to help a little bit with what we have to do today because we have to look at some more derivatives of sinusoidal functions, but trickier ones that are going to involve uh, the chain rule. So if we look at this, this is one that we could have done a long time ago. Um, probably the easiest way to do it is to just simplify the expression by multiplying our exponents. And then we would take the derivative and get 10x to the 9. I think that makes sense. That seems like the logical approach to that question. The way I want to think of it, and again, I, I think it's going to help to think of it this way based on what I'm going to try explaining to you later. If we want to take the derivative of this, think of it as a chain rule. So the chain rule was the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So the way we would do that is you, and I don't want to write that whole formula down again because it really didn't work well. It was better to just think it through. The derivative of the outside means bring the five down, leave the inside the same. And that leaving the inside the same part is going to be really important for us. So we, we took the derivative of the outside. I have to decrease the exponent to do that. That part right there, that's the derivative of the outside. Right? The outside function was that to the power of 5. I left what was inside the brackets exactly the same. Then I take the derivative of what's inside the function and get that. <clears throat> uh, and notice that is the same. Uh, that'll give us uh, 5x to the 8 times 2 to the x, which is 10x to the 9. I'm not interested in the simplifying part. I'm interested in the fact that we can use the chain rule on a question that looks like that to get the derivative. And that's what we're going to need as we try and use um, more difficult sinusoidal functions. Remember last day we took a look at the derivative of sine x. We know the derivative of sine x is cos x. The derivative of cos x was negative sine x. So those are our two fundamental rules. Everything is based on that. But what happens when we make those functions a little bit more complicated? Um, and all we're doing for, for, I think, three slides here is taking derivatives of things. So just take the derivative, then try taking the derivative of something else, and take the derivative of something else. Uh, this is just a, basically a practice day, and we're going to try one tangent line question at the end. This is one we did yesterday. Right? The minus 5 in front doesn't really make much of a difference. You can even think of it from a graphical standpoint, what a minus 5 in front of that does. The minus reflects the graph, and the 5 is a vertical stretch. But fundamentally, it doesn't change too much about what's going on in the graph. So we're still periodic. Uh, the derivative of this, the constant stayed the same. Remember, it just stays as minus 5. And the derivative of sine x is cos x. So that's like what we did yesterday. Uh, I better slide that down so we have more space. This is also like what we did yesterday. A little bit more complicated, but still a yesterday type problem. Um, it's a product rule because it's a function times a function, but it, individually they're not too bad. Uh, the derivative of the first would be 2 cos x times the second, which is minus 3 cos x, plus the derivative of the second. Now, the derivative of the second, the derivative of cos is minus sine, right? And then there's a minus 3 there. So that's going to turn into a 3 sine x. And if you're not comfortable going at that speed, do it in two steps. That's okay, too. But I think you'll be okay with that in a, very quickly. The derivative of cos x is minus sine x. So the minus sine x and the minus 3 became the plus 3. Uh, derivative of the second times the first, which is 2 sine x. And if you wanted to, you could simplify that a little bit. Minus 6 cos squared x plus 6 sine squared x. Here we've got a quotient, 5 cos x divided by 2 sine x. So to do that, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. The quotient rule was the derivative of the top, which will be minus 5 sine x times the bottom, 2 sine x. Take away the derivative of the bottom, 2 cos x 
times the top. I cos x all over the denominator squared. Oops. Which would be 2 sine x all squared. And I'm going to try simplifying that a little bit. Uh, I do want you to remind yourself a little bit of some of the things that we can do as we simplify. So this will give us a minus 10 sine squared x and a minus 10 cos squared x. On the bottom, the 2 squared becomes a 4 and sine squared x. And this one actually turns out really neat um, from a math teacher's geekiness perspective. Uh, the minus 10 can factor out at the top. Leaves you with sine squared x plus cos squared x. And you got to like that over 5 sine squared x. I'm running out of space. This is a long one. Uh, sine squared x plus cos squared x is just 1. So I can even reduce, I guess, a little bit. Minus 5 over 2 sine squared x is your answer. So it started out pretty, pretty big, right? If you consider we went from there and simplified it all the way to there thanks to some trig identities. Okay. And last one for this slide. I think we're still okay here. Derivative of this. This is now combining a polynomial with a sinusoidal aspect. Um, but it's still a product rule, right? The derivative of the first, we're using the chain rule. And again, remember, we're going to need this in a minute. That's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So that's the derivative of the first times the second. I've run into space, so I'm going to add it down here. Derivative of the first times the second is done, plus the derivative of the second, which would be 100 cos x times the first. It would look like that. And there's not a whole lot of simplifying you could do there. Um, technically, you could factor out all of that and part of that because it's squared in the first term and cubed in the second term. So there's a little bit of factoring you could do, uh, but I'm not as worried about that just at the moment, especially with this coming up. So I'm calling these a little bit harder. This we didn't do yesterday. All those other ones we kind of we kind of did. We didn't really do a quotient rule yesterday, but um, all of those ideas still worked. I'm trying to get the derivative of this one. Uh, I, I think you can probably see quickly that, that this is a chain rule problem now because it's sine x cubed. Now, keep in mind, this would often be written this way. So that's how you'll often see it. And that, I mean, honestly, that's how it's supposed to be written, right? That red one there, that, that's better notation. But for the purposes of taking a derivative, it's going to be easier to think of it this way. So I'm often going to rewrite it. Uh, I think we'll make fewer mistakes if we do. Uh, so my recommendation is going to be to write it that way. If you want to take the derivative of the chain rule, it's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And I want you to remember back for a second uh, the one we did before. I think it was this, wasn't it? Um, and when we took the derivative, it was 5. Leave the bracket on the inside the same. And then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. We're going to do the same thing here. The 3 comes down in front. And the bracket is supposed to be left alone. It just stays as sine x. And the exponent should decrease. That's the derivative of the outside. Now we have to do the derivative of the inside. The inside function was sine x, and the derivative of sine x is cos x. That's our derivative of that one. And when the chain rule pops in, uh, often we end up getting these extra these extra trig parts to the derivative. Right? That didn't really happen as much before. But because of the chain rule, now we have a sine x and a cos x appearing at the same time. So here's really a very similar idea, but it's written probably the way we don't want to see it. It's written properly as 7 cos squared x. What that means is 7 cos x 
and it's just the cosec squared, right? The seven's in front. That, that squared, that exponent of two, isn't referring to the seven. So by writing it that way, I think this becomes a little bit easier. To get the derivative, I multiply the two by the seven to get the 14. Leave the bracket the same. Decrease the exponent by one. And then multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which would be minus sine x. And if you wanted, you could simplify that. Uh, one thing to watch out for in your textbook, uh, your textbook remembers all of the double angle formulas. Uh, and I think one of them was this, uh, sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. All right? That was one of our rules that you would have learned in advanced functions. <clears throat> and we kind of have that here. Right? We've got a cos x sine x and there's a 14 which is divisible by 2. So what your textbook would probably record as this answer would be minus 7 sine 2x. Now, I'm not especially worried about that. Um, we may need it occasionally if we need to solve. Because if we have an equation and we need to solve for x, it's harder to do sometimes if there's several different terms in it. So sometimes we'll use those formulas. Uh, but I wanted to give you the heads up on that, because if you're checking answers, you might look at it and go, wow, that looks completely wrong. It's not even close to what I had. Uh, but there's a decent chance that they've just simplified a little bit. And and that's the reason it'll look different. Uh, let's try this one. Same idea here, right? I'm going to rewrite it. Minus 10 sine x to the 9. And so if we take the derivative of that, uh, be a minus 90, leave the bracket, decrease the exponent, and multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is just cos x. There's not even much simplifying we can do with that, so we'll probably leave that one. And just for fun, let's try this guy. This has got a lot in it. It is basically doing the same thing we just did, but now it's adding in a product rule. So I'm going to be a little bit careful with the way I rewrite this. I'm going to use some square brackets. They're not really that necessary, but I, again, I think it's going to help. That's our first term, right? 3 cos x to the 8. The second term was 2 sine x to the minus 5. And I suppose if I wanted to, I could drop that sine x to the denominator, but I think it's going to be just as easy to try and get the derivative from here. So this is a big product rule question. We're just going to have to take it slowly. The derivative of the first would be 24 cos x to the 7 times the derivative of the inside of that, which would be minus sine x. And sorry, I haven't mentioned it, but remember, uh, as you're doing this, feel free to pause the video, try and get the derivative first, uh, and then see if you're see if you're right. What I've got so far, that was the derivative of the first, right? Product rule says derivative of the first times the second. The second was 2 sine x to the minus 5. So derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, which would be minus 10, leave the bracket as sine x, decrease the exponent by 1, so that should drop to minus 6 times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of sine x is cos x times the first function, which was 3 cos x to the 8. That's busy. Okay, that, that's a busy derivative. So once again, it's one of those ones you've got to be really careful, uh, pay attention to, to all of the details, and try not to miss little pieces. Um, hopefully I haven't there. I think it's okay, but I guarantee nothing. Last set of derivatives for us, which is funny because this doesn't look like it should be harder. Right? That seems like a much simpler function, f of x equals sine 3x. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's not. It, it usually causes problems when we first try it, and then after we try it for a little bit, it's okay. 
what we did a moment ago was we looked at what it would be if it was this. So that's a chain rule with the cubed being the outside function. The sine x is the inside function. This time, the sine part is the outside function, and the 3x is the inside function. So for us to take the derivative of this, first we take the derivative of the outside, <coughs> and then we take the derivative of the inside. I'm even going to put brackets there, I think. The way the derivative of the outside function works is we take the derivative and leave the inside part the same. So remember, we're going to leave that 3x there. The derivative of sine is cos, and we're leaving what was inside the same. So we leave it as cos 3x. Okay? So that whole thing in these square brackets, which you don't really need, that's the derivative of the outside cos of 3x. The derivative of sine was cos, and what was inside the cos was, or excuse me, what was inside the sine was 3x, so I leave it there. A chain rule says now I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The, the derivative of the inside was at 3x, and so we have to multiply it by 3. Which I, I don't know, I suppose you'd simplify and write it this way, wouldn't you? 3 cos 3x, if that makes sense. So what about this one? Uh, same idea, right? That 5x squared is the inside part of our cos function. So the derivative of that, the derivative of the outside would be minus sine. And we leave everything inside the same. So minus sine 5x squared. And then multiply that by the derivative of what's inside, which is 10x. using the chain rule. This one's similar. All I've done is put a 3 in front. But remember, the 3 in front didn't do much. And I'm trying to take the derivative of that. A constant in front just stays a constant in front. So the 3 stays. The derivative of sine is cos. And I'm supposed to leave the bracket the same. So 3 cos minus 2x times the derivative of what was inside, which is minus 2. That was not too bad. How about that one? It's product rule. And there's lots of stuff going on. So we'll just, we'll just take it really slow. Product rule says derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. So the derivative of this first function would be negative sine, right? Derivative of cos is negative sine. Leave the inside the same. So leave that as 5x to the 10. And multiply it by the derivative of what's inside, which would be 10x. Oh, not 10x, sorry. 10 times 5. 50 x to the 9. That's the derivative of the first times the second. Plus the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of the second will be minus 3. But instead of sine, it's now, co it's now cos, right? The derivative of sine is cos. So minus 3 cos. Leave the inside the same as pi x and multiply that by the derivative of what's inside. The inside part of that one is just pi x. And pi is a number, right? So it's a number in front of the, the variable. So the derivative of that is just pi. And that times the first function, which we can just write down. There we go. OK, one more to try. And it's a fun one. <clears throat> f of x equals 6 cos 2x to the 5th all to the 10. 
this is a super chain rule problem. This is a three level chain rule. Um, the outermost function is this to the power of 10. Inside that, there's this six cos part. And then inside of that is the two X to the fifth. So there's, there's three levels of functions here, which we need to take the derivative of. So take a shot. If, if you can, pause the video here, see if you can get it. Uh, be awesome. It'd be great if you could. This is, this is a tricky one. Um, we'll take it slow. Here we go. Derivative of the outside says bring the 10 in front, leave everything inside the same, decrease, decrease the exponent by 1. That's the derivative of the, the outermost function, right? The 10 came down, everything inside the bracket stayed the same, the outside exponent decreased by 1. Now I'm into here. So now I'm looking at this function. So to take the derivative of that, it would be 6. Change, oh, excuse me, I got to be a little bit careful there, don't I? No, I'll be, I was this way. The 6 stays. Uh, the derivative of cos is minus sine. So I, I'm going to write it this way. If I'd been really clever, I would have written minus 6, but I wasn't really clever. So the derivative of cos was minus sine. And then I leave what's inside the same. So that's still 2x to the fifth. Oh, and I need another bracket now because of my gaff. OK. So that's the derivative of the, the um, what would you call it, middle inside. Now I need to go to the next inside part, multiplied by the derivative of that, which is just 10x to the fourth. Good times. Chain rule is fun. Uh, that's a that's a tough derivative, so be careful with that. Remember how we handled derivatives earlier that got fairly large like this. Uh, we said don't worry about simplifying them. So when it gets to something like that, it's actually much easier for me to see if you've done it right if you leave it unsimplified because I can track through and see what you've done much more easily. So that's a this is a very acceptable answer for a question like this. Okay, last one for us to try. Uh, derivative gets a little bit easier, uh, but we just want to try a tangent problem again. Um, we did one last class, and that's uh, probably worthwhile to try. Determine the equation of the tangent line to the function when x is equal to minus pi. So we're trying to get y equals mx plus b. We're going to need the slope, which means we need the derivative. And to get the derivative of this, we're going to have to use the product rule. Derivative of the first would be 2x times the second sine 2x plus the derivative of the second. Well, derivative of the second would be cos of 2x, right? Derivative of sine is cos. But because it was 2x, we have to take the derivative of the inside 2, and the derivative of 2x is 2. So there's derivative of the second times the first, which is x squared. And we would like to know the slope when x is equal to minus pi. So that's 2 times minus pi sine of minus 2 pi plus cos of minus 2 pi times 2 times minus pi squared. And we're not used to all those pi's all over the place, but, but I think it's OK. Um, the first part that's nice, uh, that sine of minus 2 pi is 0. So this whole this whole part here is gone. Right? That's just 0. So then we have to worry about what comes later. Um, cos of minus 2 pi is 1. So it's 1 times 2 uh, and minus pi squared. Minus squared becomes positive, right? So that's just pi squared. So our slope is 2 pi squared, which is a weird slope, but it's simplified really nice considering what we started with. The other thing I suppose we need, and I wish I had a little more space on the right, but I, I, I'm going to put it up here anyway. We need to figure out the point, right? We know the x value. 
but I'd like to know the y value. So f of minus pi, if I put that in, sorry, I'm, I apologize, I'm squeezing this in, minus pi squared like that. Uh, but then look what happens here. We go sine of minus 2 pi. And we said a second ago, sine of minus 2 pi was 0, right? So this is just an answer of 0. So our point turns out really nice. It's just minus pi 0. So I'm back to getting the equation of the tangent line. I'm going to sub in the slope, which is 2 pi squared. And to solve for the b value, solve for the y-intercept, we'll just sub in that point, minus pi and 0. Let's go 0 in here. 2 pi squared minus pi. So we end up with a 2 pi cubed. Excuse me, a minus 2 pi cubed. And that gives us the y-intercept. So kind of a funny answer, but works out not too badly, I suppose. Uh, 2 pi squared was the slope. Plus 2 pi... Oops, I missed the x again. 2 pi cubed is the y-intercept. And that gives us our, our tangent line. Again, I, I always worry when I'm doing these, and you guys aren't actually in class watching me, so I, I hope I did the math right. I, if I ever do one of these wrong, somebody let me know so that I can uh, adjust the video for, for future years. But uh, again, we mentioned it last class when we did the tangent line questions. Um, you're expecting to get answers with pies in them, right? You're expecting to get answers that aren't real great. Uh, and that's fine. Carry on with the pies. I want you to, I want you to use them. Uh, we're trying to use exact values as best we can. And it works out not too badly. Right? The pi ends up being treated mostly like a variable, and so you're just using a little bit of your algebraic skills to try and simplify.